What's up everybody, Alex here, and welcome to the Dota Underlords Best Builds of the Week Big Update Edition. This week, we've got five top tier builds for you to help you navigate this new Big Update meta. Let's dive right in. The first build of the week is... The Knights and Healers. Now, this is a variation of the classic Knights and Warlock build. And what you've got here is you've got your Knights positioned in a way where you're protecting your key squishies, uh, Enchantress, your uh, Underlord, uh, an Essex who is going to be specced towards healing. You have Necrophos here up front. An interesting call and something that I've not seen many people do is have is having Lone Druid and Enchantress in this build. The Enchantress obviously finishes the healer, uh, healer trait, but Lone Druid up front is going to get a bear up in the front very quickly. Uh, ideally, you want to get a refresher orb on him as well in order to get two bears out there. Um, and the key to this build is Sven. Sven's Ace of Knights ability, which basically reduces their uh, their knight's bonus and damage reduction and magic resistance and increases their damage output, is the key. This coupled with the healing potential of uh, the healer trait and your Underlord being specced fully towards healing will allow you to do a massive amount of damage and it all coincides with Sven casting God's strength which activates his, uh, his ace of knights ability and at that point in time an Essex will more or less be casting her heal so it couples together very well why don't we test this in action all right let's see these knights in action so what we've got here we have our knights composition and we have ourselves some foes what I did is these are the ABCs of Dota Underlords I literally went through the freestyle menu added them in alphabetical order and then modified them on the board so that they could roughly be in the right position so they're gonna act as punching bags for our compositions as we test so what you're gonna see you're gonna see anti mage hopping back but the damage being taken by um, by the Enchantress just allows her to get her heal off right away. You're going to see that the bear is up very early. Um, God's Strength being cast, which allows us to greatly increase the amount of DPS we're doing with greatly benefits uh, people like the Dragon Knight. Overall, this is an absolutely fantastic build. Sven is absolutely key to it, so be sure Sven is not in the jail if you're looking to do this build. And our second build of the week is... Heartless Hunters. So with Heartless Hunters, what you're looking to do is you're looking to maximize the amount of DPS you can do with Heartless. The, uh, the 10 armor reduction is huge and you have your Hunters positioned in a way where they are protected on that rear line. Uh, you have two Knights, you have uh, Abaddon which also contributes to Heartless and you have Luna. Now a lot of people say, hey Luna, that's a weird pick. Well because Luna's positioned here with, uh, with Abaddon, the positioning is very important. Uh, Luna's protected with Pudge and he also uh, allows uh, Abaddon to get the knight bonus of the 15% reduction which is going to increase Abaddon's sustain. The key here is that you're going to be doing as much damage as you can. Marana's in the corner because Marana can jump so if she happens to get punch pulled she should be able to jump out of the way and not take too much damage. Now the key to this strategy is to do as much damage as you can. Now one thing I want to note with an Essex you're going to be specking towards damage so as you can see in Martyr's Boon you see the end of of medicine which is the round 10 selection that's what you want you want to increase the amount of damage you're doing you're not interested in healing in this build you want to be uh, specking towards break you want to be specking uh, towards you know actually even if you have enthrall perfect that's what you want you want to use enthrall because your hunters uh, they get a bonus of basically uh, multiple attacks and what they can do is they can burn down enemy units very quickly so this build especially if you've unlocked enthrall is absolutely excellent so Keep an eye for it because it's going to be rising up the meta charts fast. And our third build of the week is Knights and Trolls. So what you've got here, you got your Knights and you got your Trolls. And uh, the key here is that Knights and Trolls has always been a long-standing strategy in Dota Underlords. It's actually one of the first guides that I ever wrote for Dota Underlords. And it's nice to see that they're back. So this is one of the compositions that you can get to. Um, but... You might be thinking, Alex, what's Knights and Trolls without Sven or Troll Warlord? So let's actually get them in here. Let's get Sven and let's get our friend the Warlord. Uh, both, okay, they're at one star right now, but let's assume we can get them to two star. But Sven, if you want to get Sven into this lineup, how do you do it? Who do you take out? You're actually taking out 
the Dragon Knight. You might be thinking, well, that's crazy, Alex. Why would we ever take the Dragon Knight out? Well, it's because we're not using Puck or Viper. So the Dragon Knight is not transforming. Therefore, Sven is going to be more valuable in this situation. Uh, you might actually even want to do this. If you want to get the uh, the God Strength off quicker, it's up to you. Now, if you want to get Troll Warlord in, you have a choice. You can take either the Shadow Shaman out or the Witch Doctor. Uh, both being equal, I would choose the Shadow Shaman. The Witch Doctor's uh, stun is a little too valuable, although the buff to Shadow Shaman makes him a good choice as well. So if you have like a level, you know, a three-star Shadow Shaman, take out the Witch Doctor. It's no problem. Uh, with regards to specking here, you're specking towards damage or healing. It's up to you. Uh, I would spec more towards damage because with the Healing Alliance, um, you are going to be getting a lot of healing from your units. However, keep in mind, the uh, bonus healing also is applied to your Underlord as well. So more testing will show as to which is more effective. Both are perfectly acceptable, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. Um, you know, healing's great, damage That's is great, as particularly when you talk about Martyr's Boon. But overall, this is a very good build and one that I have had a lot of success with. And our fourth build of the week is Primordials, Mages, and Humans. Well, I guess we got Dragons in there too. So. What we have here is we have our mages positioned near the back to uh, to protect them. We have once again Puck in the corner because if Puck gets pulled, uh, Puck's relatively elusive so he can survive a little longer than say Keeper of the Light can. We have our Primordials, level 2 Primordial only. Um, that's kind of the best that I could feel for this, this build because we want to maximize the amount of damage we're doing with magic. And I also felt that the human uh, mana regeneration was key so we didn't want to sacrifice that either. Now one thing I want to mention is Tiny is actually very important to this uh, build because you have Keeper of the Light and Puck, both of which are doing, going to be doing damage in a line across the field of play. We're also using uh, we're also using Hobgin here because we want to increase the amount of DPS we're doing. Hobgin's pure DPS is excellent, especially with his magical ability. So that's what we're going for here. So what we're going to do here is I want you to note how how Tiny throws into the line of fire for. Um, for these two mages here. See how that those guys got displaced here, which is gonna help our uh, Puck and our Keeper of the Light do additional damage. Now, overall, this is a very effective build. It's doing a ton of damage with your, your mages. Um, and keep in mind, Lich here, as the Ace of Mages, which is going to increase the amount of mana regeneration you're doing, it allows you to cast so unbelievably quickly. Look at the damage. Your Dragon Knight's gonna be doing a ton of damage at first, but then Morphling, Puck, and then, well, they just, those guys are gone, so Keeper of the Light didn't get much of a chance. But look at that jump in pure DPS and damage. Keeper of the Light went from almost non-existent to nearly the top damage dealer. That's why we're, we're maximizing the amount of damage we're doing with mages. That's why we have these guys positioned in the corners. That's why we have Tiny throwing them into the uh, fire for Keeper of the Light and Puck because of the sheer amount of damage potential. And for our final build of the week, we have... Warriors and Trolls. Now, this is very similar to the Knights and Trolls, except there's a key difference here. We are using Druids and Shamans. Now, the positioning here is so crucial. So, you know, this is one of those uh, those moments where you really want to pay attention to how things are positioned. So, you have your Warriors up front. That's obvious. You want Tidehunter stunning, you want Kunkka stunning, and you want Tiny throwing. Tiny positioned here in front of Anessix because you want to protect Anessix and displace one of the units away from her. Pudge, Slardar, protecting the rear line here. Now, you have, um, in the event that a, say, an assassin jumps into these gaps, you're thinking, hey, Alex, there's a lot of gaps here. Well, if they're attacking Nature's Prophet, you're utilizing his Shaman ability to change them into a chicken. If they hit uh, Shadow Shaman, again, chicken. Um, the nice thing about uh, Troll Warlord is he's a warrior, so he's benefiting from 20 additional armor. He's got five assists, so we have 25 armor, but he's got Io beside him. Io, we were after the tether. He's going to uh, increase the damage reduction further by 20% and increase the uh, the damage output and attack speed of the Troll Warlord. If you know, Troll Warlord, his fervor uh, passive allows him to ramp up in speed. You are positioning Io in a manner that allows him to only ever buff the Troll Warlord. You're actually trying to keep this space empty so Io never ever tethers to any other unit. The result is you're going to have a Troll Warlord that does an insane amount of damage. Watch what happens. You have the Troll Warlord tethered here. Io's tethered to him, right? He's doing so much damage. Nature's Prophet gets that initial burst, but the Troll Warlord's just oh going to keep God, going oh off because of the... Uh, the increase in attack speed and his fervor passive. 
put a Daedalus on him, he's absolutely out of control. This revolves, this strategy revolves around the Troll Warlord and the IO being together. So please pay special attention to the positioning. Uh, look at that. Troll Warlord, 12,000 damage. It's unbelievable. And his armor and IO being in the vicinity really helps him. So this is a fantastic build. I really hope you guys try it. I'm going to be, I've, I've been playing a ton of this. I hopefully will do a video about it soon. So uh, it's a fantastic build. Just so you guys know, the Sven Knights and Healer build and the Heartless hunters i'm going to fe be featuring at the end of this video in the end cards so be sure to check those out uh awesome strategies that i did some gameplay for thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to all my wonderful subscribers take care everyone and best of luck in this big update of dota underlords